I've used the Vermeer calipers on them. Now, <coughs> we go from 146 thousandths diameter all the way down to 88 thousandths diameter. Now, your 146 thousandths diameter is the flint like this. which goes into your gas torch striker. <clears throat> 146 thousandths. If I were able to get that apart, you know, the aluminum part off, it would still be too big. All right, now we've got the flint that is supposed to be going I get my tweezers. Where are they? Well, the flint is supposed to be going in to the Kohler flame safety lamp. That diameter is 125 thousandths. Now that's an eighth of an inch. That's what's supposed to go in there. Now the next flint, we got a flint out of a big liner. And that's 99 thousandths. It goes in there. You know, I, I've used it. It goes in there. But somehow, they do not put out a hog enough spark in order to ignite my fuel on my wick. No matter what I do, it seems like uh, I have to do it like 10 times before I can get it lit. Now that's 99 thousandths diameter. Now your next, next flint are the little red ones. Like what goes in a Zippo lighter. They put a coating on them, I think perhaps to uh, keep the corrosion down for long term storage. This is how they come. They're 96 thousandths diameter. Now the last example of the flint is from Lehman's catalog, which uh, is listed as a flint for a carbide lamp. And they are way undersized in that they're only 88 thousandths of an inch. No way of working. Now I don't know where to get 125 thousandths diameter flints, 8 inch diameter for the flame safety lamp. But that flint will light my flame safety lamp every time. <clears throat> if anybody can get a line on it, I'd like to hear about it. Now, back to the flame safety lamp. We're going to go back together with it. First of all, you take your fount, you know, after you've serviced it and, and uh, put a, a new flint in it. You take your bottom, a bestest gasket with the lantern ring on it. You put that on top of your fount. Then you take your glass globe, put that on top of your asbestos gasket. Then you take your upper asbestos gasket, put that on top of your globe. Then you take your inner gauze and your outer gauze, put them together, set them up, set them on top of your asbestos gasket and globe assembly. Right like that. Next you take your bonnet 
and your expansion ring. And that will only go through the side like this. So it's pretty much captive in there. But that will allow for the heat contraction between your asbestos gaskets and your inner and outer gauze to stay together so that a flame will not go through that. Next you take, put your bonnet assembly on, and there you have it. Again, I've used these uh, spelunking, going into uh, many uh, abandoned mines and caves and such. Uh, I would not, I would never go into a uh, confined space without the bare minimum of a flame safety lamp. Uh, mostly probably to detect oxygen deficiency. If this goes out, you got to get back the fresh air or put more air to it. Uh, that concludes the flame safety lamp uh, part of it. Uh, well, I forgot. <clears throat> you know, uh, we've been talking about the 209. And we have the 201 sitting here. This is a, a 201 bonnet with a 201A found and the difference in being in that uh, the 201A went to the round width like the 209s are and the first 201 come out with a flat width. The founts uh, looks like that they, they will interchange. I'll try them out. That's about the only thing that interchanges. Even the globe on the 201 uh, is taller than on the 209. They do uh, make replacement parts, or they have, in that uh, here's the, a brand new top for a 209. And I found this in a, uh, a mine dump. So, I hope this has helped you. Uh, don't, don't go into mines, don't go into old caves and all that stuff. You know, it's the, the worst thing. You know, why do it? You know, stay out of things. But if you do, you know, or, or any confined space, at least have a flame safety lamp, you know, to check for oxygen deficiency. And maybe even a anemometer. You know, these will turn at a minimum of airflow. If you got some kind of air moving, you, you may be all right. But uh, none of that's 100% absolute. But I know these have saved my life. But they're not absolute. There's better methods of testing. Always have a crew of people with you and have a safety harness on. Safety first. You'd be really careful if you do this. I don't recommend it. That concludes uh, the flame safety lamp uh, uh, part two here. And our next video, I believe that we're going to uh, give our uh, opinions on the SKS rifle. I know other people have, but uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're kind of confined uh, inside with the weather and waiting on other parts and such. So our next video is going to be on the SKS <laughs> rifle. The good points on it and some bad points. Thank you for watching, and we'll be right back with you on our next video.